Morning, welcome to the channel. So today I am changing a consumer unit um, and it's a fairly new build. It's not an old build by any means, but it's coming up to 10 years old, I believe. Um, clients looking at potentially selling the house and wants to bring everything up to date. So let's go and have a look at inside the board. So if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, make sure you do, link is in, I'm gonna go with it, this corner, no, this corner. Whichever one it is, it's in one of these. So I'll go and smash it, come on. Do the right thing. Okay, so we're gonna look in the main meter cupboard together. A little taparoo. Let's have a little look, a little, little look-see. So we've got a mains isolator, which is fantastic. Uh, it's a 100 amp type two, brilliant. So there was been talk at some stage about an EV charger. So that'd be fine. Making sure that we've got no, so obviously for that, if we had a shared supply, there'd be another lead out of here. Um, this is on the L1 phase, just in case, it's all nicely labelled up. And it is a TNCS system, so wicked. So we're all good to go. Let's pop inside. So obviously, first things first, massive customer points. So the client's already set me out a table, which is wicked, so other people take note. And I've got a cheeky brew on, which is even better. So happy days, that's a massive winner, thanking you. Um, so we've got a split load board in here at the minute. So I've just took the, the cover off to have a little gander. Now we have got, it's all labeled up and I've also got the original paperwork uh, for this as well, which is great. So looking at that though, where the meter tails come in, so they've not been installed that great uh, by the looks of that on that neutral leg, if you can see there. So you've got copper exposed on that one. I've also got three cables whacked into this ring. So that's not great as for a new build. I'm not sure what that's going on there. So, so it's all labeled up. Um, so let's kill the power off, and get going. So we've also got some copper exposed on those terminals there. So just, just a little bit sloppy on that. So, Weird one, so maybe on one of those, there is a socket down there. Um, so it might be that is fed for that one. So not a problem. We've got security alarm here that looks like it's been shoehorned in, which is that one, but it might be disconnected now and not, not in use. So let's get the power off. So we'll just, get the lock off kit, get that locked off, make sure nobody else comes in and decides to turn it on. Okay, so for all you doubters out there, she is locked off. Now obviously locking off is a definitely a way of life. Make sure you do it. How many times have you not done that? You imagine if someone comes in and decides just to energize that because they think you're doing you a solid, especially if you're working on sites where you've not got full control make sure you do it. Okay, so we have now obviously proved dead, so you need to make sure that you have got your proving unit and a voltage indicator to make sure that you don't get fried and give yourself a little tingle. When I say a little tingle, it'll end your life, so big tingle. Um, so what I've done is I've just labeled up with a Sharpie all my circuit numbers, so I've just labeled up one to match up what your original is. So I'm gonna get that stripped out, get it all gone, and uh, get your new board fitted. So we're gonna have a fuse box, fuse box boards going in with a SPD at source. Um, it's obviously metal clad now, which is going in. So this is a maxed out at 10 way board and it's now 14 that's going in. So it's got room for growth because there was talk having a EV charger potentially for new people who move in here at a later date. It's a detached garage, which you'll see a bit later on in the video. Um, and obviously I can show you what would be the install of that if I was doing the job, but we're not doing that today. That's not gonna happen. So anyway, gotta get this whipped off. Okay, so two little things that I've just noticed straight away off the bat. So the buzz bar has been cut too short. So then they've linked that across with a bit of six mil um, from there to there rather than replacing the buzz bar. Also, we've got two extended cables in here from day one. Um, it's a bit random, so who knows? That's a bit, bit shoddy from, from day one. A bit of poor planning, I would say. Um, so the alarm was in, the one that's not in is a 
It's labelled up from a, like a carbon monoxide sensor, I'm guessing. That's what's uh, no longer in use. So let's get this off. Okay, board's off. So what I now tend to do is obviously straighten all the cables out as best I can. Whack a bit of tape around there. Just makes the life a lot easier when you're trying to get it into the back of the board. Now, obviously, it's a tight little cupboard. I'm not going to be able to show you everything. So we're going to get that board. Once I get that board mounted up, because I literally have my back to you. And you're not going to see anything. So next clip you'll see that on. Okay, so the board is mounted, um, so it's really important to use your grommet strip, which is that bad boy. So you do get a grommet strip that actually comes with it, um, but I tend to find that it falls off. So the grommet strip is not expensive, it's nice and easy to use, does make the job a lot easier, especially when you're bringing through loads of cables like that. Now fixings wise, make sure that you're using some good quality fixings like those bad boys. Um, so these are Fisher that I tend to use. Really, really good top quality fixings. So these are a duo, which is a six, six mil drill out and some pan head screws. So you wanna use those bad boys. So if you're using wood screws, don't use those because they don't sit flat uh, on there. So obviously you need to use a pan head screw and that's obviously making sure it's level. I mean, come on, it's basics. Okay, so we're gonna now get those cables put in to get the meter tails in first. Now I'll put a post on Instagram. If you don't follow us on Instagram, the, the link's in the description below anyway. Um, but I put a post out the other day about whether you put your meter tails in first or second, Who, which, which camp do you fall in? 99% of the time, I will always put the tails in first. But on this particular job, I just wanted for old time's sake, thought I'll try it second actually didn't cause me any problems whatsoever. Um, but in this instance, it will do because of the way that the meter tails come in. They're a bit awkward. Um, so let's get those put in and get them out of the way. Okay, just wanted to show you this. So if you see that meter tail there, so you see the angle of the cut. So they've cut them straight originally, then folded. And then what that does, that creates this shape here. So what you'll have is these cores at the bottom of the terminal and these ones barely in. That is what you exactly want to try and avoid. So form it, then trim it to suit to make sure you get a nice flat bottom on the cable. Just thought I'd just show you that. It's another quite an easy job just to sort out and do it right. Right, I thought I'd give you a bit of an update of where we're at. Um, so all the RCBOs are in. I've now discovered that that socket that's down there is a cheeky little radial that they've slipped in there. Um, so that was powered off the 32 amp uh, ring. So we're gonna have to put another circuit in there for that. Now they've cut all the cables stupidly short as well to, to make, oh, just to make it all nice and pretty. So it's not, it's gonna be a functional, what I'm gonna call a functional board change because it's not all about having it absolutely dressed in, you know, and all the rest of it. This is going to be real world. And in fairness, I was just chatting to the client and he's noticed loads of different things in this house that is just very, very poor standard of new build. And that's what we're at. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to dress all these in as best I possibly can, um, fire seal all the back because that wasn't done. Um, yeah, and just, just make it as neat as possible. It is one of these, you know, what can you do? So I thought I'd bring you in for a bit of a closer look on here. So at the minute, none of these CPCs are, well, earths, let's be honest, that's what we all call it. None of the earths are actually long enough to make it um, over to the, the MET here. So we're gonna have to do something about that. Um, and yeah, it's just not not great. It's not It's not a pretty, board. I mean, whenever you're normally doing a board, you'd normally leave plenty of slack. So in the case of a board change in the future, which isn't that long, you know, obviously for this one, um, you know, you can make it as nice as possible. Now, same on my main earthing. So we've got the bonding, main earth here. They are tight. So we've actually re rearranged the configuration for that to make that work. So like I say, it's going to be a functional board. So we'll, there was talk about, you know, potentially lifting it up here and giving a bit more slack, but they don't really want to be messing about with decor and all the rest of it because it's actually a little bit smashed in behind there as well. So all good. Okay, so the board, um, the board is in, in basically it's functional now. 
So I've got the power back on, I've got one, because I've now found that spur down there, I've now took the 16 amp RCBO for that, because I've separated it. So I've got to now fit another 16 amp for the immersion, which I'm gonna do. So while I'm sorting that out, um, I'm gonna be doing the testing. So I've had to extend a lot of the cables, like I say, for, well, the, the, the earth I've had to do anyway, not great. So I've replaced the bit of trunking for the alarm, replaced that, and I've also rewired that because it was too short and obviously it's pointless extending that when it's literally just there. So we're on to testing now, that's the main thing. So it's, it's just, fought me this board has fought me and because i know we all getting that blame society and stuff but obviously when you're got a new build which is what this was you'd have thought you'd have it, i mean they were putting joins in from day one joins in from day one it's not great so it's, it is what it is anyway so we're on to testing now so like i say just have a little bit of a square up and then getting rattling around some testing okay so i've blasted around the house done all my testing so like i say it's a, a functional consumer unit which is what i'm going to call it um so there is a couple of issues so we've got there's no continuous cpc for the downstairs lights so there is some decorative lights that have been up so fingers crossed it's on something like that um there's also the down lights classic new build the down lights are not great so they have been sort of smashed and bent into place to fit also the classic one where you've got the single insulation on show so that obviously they've not terminated them properly they, i mean to be fair they've just been rammed in there and bent I and mean, they've actually snapped some of the down lights so i mean that's pretty excessive to, to sort that out um what else is that yeah so the other one a weird one so the garage consumer unit it's got a metal casing and a plastic front so i think over at some point it doesn't fit properly at all so it's obviously it's not it doesn't uh, conform to the IP ratings on there because you can get your finger inside. Um, weird one. Um, it's almost like they've lost the lid in amongst the build and gone, oh, I found this and let's stick that on. Um, weird. Um, so that's that's another thing to be sorted. So overall, I mean, I was expecting better in fairness, but it's been a little bit, fought me a little bit this one. So what I'm now gonna do is fit some fire sealant in the back to make sure that obviously that I'm not gonna transverse of in the risk, in the, in, in the risk, in the event of a fire, because I've got quite a big cavity there and that's gonna go straight up the boards. Um, so I'm gonna seal that now. Um, and then it's on to labeling. I'm gonna label all the, the, the house up. So the labeling was quite, um, elusive as well it wasn't quite right so we're going to sort that all out now so just thought i'd give you a little bit of an update <laughs> Board's all done, all hoovered up. Um, so I've just got a socket upstairs to do in the craft room, which I'm gonna go on, crack on with that now. Right, <clears throat> so the crack is, we've got a double socket here underneath the desk area, which is like the hobby room as such. So what we're gonna do is, the idea is the client wants another socket to the side of it, wants to, uh, cause obviously we've got a lot of plugs and stuff going on. So first things first, I need to go and get the power off. Power's off, so what I need to do is try and figure out whether there's stud or anything in the way. Okay, so I've got a timber here. So cables from, come from below, which is expected, because obviously I'm on the um, second story. So. Again, stud buddy, we'll see. Ah, right, okay. So I've got a stud straight away there. So, which means that it's gonna be a bit of an issue if I was to put the socket side by side that close. So I've got one or two options. I can try and take that out, which is what I'm going to do, and see how far I can get, because I might be able to drill that way. But if that's in the center of the stud, the chances are I'm not gonna be able to get the socket to go that way.
Okay, so because the stud's there, the socket really needs to go that way. So I'm just going to go downstairs and go and confirm with the client whether that's okay or not. If not, I will make that happen uh, going over to the right, but it just means that chances are it's going to be a bit more damage. So I've just used the screwdriver, took out the um, one of the knockouts, and it goes in that far. So it's enough for me to get a dry liner in there comfortably without causing any damage. Um, so two seconds, I'll go and confirm with the client. Good news, the customer says I can go that way, which is wicked. Um, so we're just going to mark all that out. Even better. Right, I think that's going to fit in there. Right, slight change of plan. Because you've got a timber batten all the way across, which obviously the original Sparky has, has had the fixing in, you can't push this all the way back in. And rather than going to cut all the back down, what I'm going to do is go and get a metal clad box. Good idea to leave these cables this long. Not really, I couldn't even, I couldn't even hold it in. Couldn't even hold it in. Don't leave them that long, that would be ridiculous. Right, I'm not tightening them up straight away um, because I want to make sure that they're all level to each other. Right, the other thing that this person's done, the original, he's put both the earths in one bit of sleeve in. Really annoying, don't do that. In fact, that sleeve is knackered as well. See, you might be wondering why I don't like that, right? And the reason is that I don't like having both the, the earths into one bit of sleeving is because you can't quite see whether it's in the terminals correctly. And I've been to loads and loads of jobs before over the past and other Sparkies will back me up on this. That you will think they're in and you don't know for definite. So what will then happen is you'll get intermittent readings and stuff like that. So just don't do it. Just make sure you individually sleeve and just do it the right way. All right. Okay, so there you have it. Another socket in installed. Nice and simple job. Like I say, buy yourself a stud buddy if you haven't got one. It's not sponsored by them whatsoever. It's just something, somebody put me onto one um, a long time ago and I actually thought how good it was so that if I didn't have that that would have caused me a bit of an issue yes there is other ways you can go about it but it just saves loads of time so now the client's got no damage all right tiny little bit there tiny tiny little bit but overall jobs are good in so hopefully you've enjoyed this little video um, if you haven't subscribed already make sure you do and uh, Give us a thumbs up if you like it. Drop your comments below as usual and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.